So with that, I'm going to finish and introduce our next speaker. I'm sorry, I ran a little bit over. Um, Dr. John LaPuma, he's a clinical director and founder of the, of the Chef Clinic, the healthy eating and fitness program to prevent and treat obesity, uh, maintain weight loss and promote wellness. He is also a professionally trained chef, organic farmer and board certified physician who's pioneered the field of culinary medicine. Dr. LaPuma is author or co-authored seven books, two of which are New York Times bestsellers, Dr. LaPuma also co-founded ChefMD, a Freddie Award-winning health media brand that promotes culinary medicine. Additionally, he co-hosts Lifetime TV's Health Corner and hosts PBS's ChefMD Shorts, as well as PBS specials on diet and fitness. Dr. LaPuma also recently released a documentary series on nature therapy called Green RX. Today, Dr. LaPuma will give a talk titled Silver Linings to the Pandemic. Some good news. Uh, we're all Looking for that, forward to that talk um, for sure. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. John Lapu. Well, thank you so much. Really enjoyed your talk. It was great. Um, I'm going to speak today a little bit about silver linings of the pandemic, uh, seven in particular. Um, so, if we could have the first slide, please. Thank you. Um, well, let me let me talk about my disclosures first. Uh, I'm not, I'm founder, as Will mentioned, of uh, Chef Clinic and um, Chef MD and uh, Plant with a Doc, uh, which is a new iteration of Green RX. I'm not going to be discussing off label or investigational uses of drugs unless you count plants and food, which I do. Uh, so there's that. Um, today, where does silver lining come from? Milton actually coined the term in 1634 in his work Comus I, and he described it as appearing underneath a sable cloud, a dark cloud. Uh, he also coined the term pandemonium in 1667, 30 years later in Paradise Lost uh, in that mask, and um, a few years later wrote Paradise Regained. So Milton was way ahead. He saw that there were bright spots even when there was darkness. He described hell, which a lot of us have been through. And then he saw a way out. And I want to say that here are seven ways that we can think of that way out right now. Um, first, there has been during the pandemic, a moral elevation of scientists and clinicians. We're finally kind of cool again. Um, and the idea that healthcare has a lane has been made front and center. Uh, Donald Burrick wrote in uh, JAMA in July about um, the moral determinants of health uh, in a wonderful essay that I'm sure you've all read and that I recommend to anyone who has it. The question, of course, is whether we ought to diagnose and treat like doctors do and only do that, or if we should, as Will just alluded to, improve social conditions and do it in a way that is about policy, not just about treating patients. Um, you'll see from this Pew Research data that the confidence of the medical, of me, in medical scientists and in scientists in general actually has risen over time. And the ethical standards of medical doctors, you'll be happy to see, has gone up in 2020. Um, the same thing is true for um, the percentage of U.S. adults who say scientists should take an active role in a 60-40 split and make usually better choices around policy decisions than other people, uh, or at least not as neither better nor worse. Um, our second, oh, that's a preview. Our second silver lining is that gardening and home cooking are now essential. They're not just nice to have or something you do on a weekend, but they're really important. And that's a wonderful thing because they have all kinds of beneficial effects. They get you outside if you're gardening, they help you move, they um, give you a feeling of accomplishment both for cooking and gardening. They're meditative, both of them. And of course they help you escape boredom, which uh, if you overeat really isn't so good. 40 square foot garden can help you sequester either a quarter to a half a ton of carbon. That's something that actually makes a difference in climate change. More of us than ever are eating at home and stress baking. I gave you a quick preview of the slide that shows chocolate chip cookie dough, which some people believe is a separate cookie than cooked chocolate chip cookies, baked chocolate chip cookies. But nevertheless, this is how people have been stress baking. Um, this, 
this is really how one ought to be baking or rather cooking and doing so. And we're seeing more of this as well with fresh greens, with uh, whole eggs and with oranges. Oranges during the pandemic, actually in the second quarter of this year, uh, were the most popular fruit uh, uh, ever that is uh, by cash sales. Um, about 75% of Florida's oranges have been lost, as you probably know, to greening disease, but California produces about 80% of the country's oranges. Nevertheless, people have bought them because they associate them with better immunity because of their vitamin C content. Never mind that a red bell pepper has four times the vitamin C of a beautiful Washington navel. Um, gardening and cooking are important, not just because they give you more produce, because they reduce your uh, bills, because they alleviate boredom and can be meditative, as I said, but also because they actually have a therapeutic value. They begin to relieve stress. That, that idea that being in touch with nature and being in touch with the soil is a powerful uh, personal tool to feeling better, and we all need to. Uh, here Josie is with four large Armenian cucumbers that we grew from one vine, and here are pickles that you can make from those cucumbers, uh, and someone did in a photo of pickled um, cucumbers and tomatoes. This all to show that putting up what you grow, using extras from what you grow, is part of what we've been learning. The third silver lining, climate change is actually reversible, who knew? And that the outdoors is safer than the indoors. You know, particulate matter, 2.5 microns in carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide pollution all dropped in the first quarter. They all have started to go up in the second and now third quarter. But for a while, there were dolphins in the Venice canals. You could see the Himalayas. You could hear the dawn chorus and the songs from the songbirds making up the dawn chorus were both more complex and softer because there was less ambient noise and noise pollution. Um, here you see the uh, drop in carbon dioxide emissions in the first quarter of 2020, more than any other year in the last 120, according to this nature sh study, showing that we can actually begin to reverse this if we are resolved to. The fourth silver lining is that mindfulness became essential. Not just a tool of titans like Tim Ferriss writes about in his great book for about CEOs and productivity and creativity, and not just for nutty Californians, but for everybody who wants to be able to focus and not have the pressure of the world upon them with everything from echo anxiety to, um, to homelessness and other serious problems. For example, see this side of the top iPhone app downloads. And you can find the top four iPhone app downloads in the last year of Calm. Uh, the next one is number four, Motivation. The next one, Headspace. And then the final one, Reflectly. At least four of the top nine iPhone downloads and health and fitness can turn meditation. If you don't have a meditation practice, you should investigate one because it helps you focus, it helps you concentrate, it helps you put things in perspective. The next slide will show those kinds of trends in either in the next, in the final quarter, where we see calm, reflectively, headspace, fabulous, and then to a lesser extent, Metatopia, all in the top 100 downloads of iPhone health and fitness apps in the last corner. Again, emphasizing the importance of meditation in keeping, uh, keeping same. Fifth silver lining, it created perspective, as I just alluded to with the meditation practice. What is really most important to us? What is it that you get up in the morning for? Do you get up in the morning and concern yourself with self-care? Perhaps you should. Do you get your, up in the morning and concern yourself with community care? Oh, is that, how are those related? COVID has showed us that those are intimate related. You really can't have one without the other if you want to participate in American life. What is one small tangible thing that you can do today or tomorrow, because today is almost over, tomorrow to make somebody else's life in the community better? That might be a family member, it might be someone next door, it might be someone cross country. If you think about that, one small tangible thing you can do today to, to make someone else's life better, then everything begins to have 
a perspective. You have developed perspective. And that perspective is truly valuable and, of course, at the core of ethics. The sixth silver lining. More pets have been adopted and fostered in the last six months than in the previous 30 months. There is 43% less in euthanasia. Adoption rate of, of pets is up 73% over the same time period last year. This data from a, a Corollary Society to the Humane Society. Um, it is remarkable that we are saving so many lives of dogs and cats, and I'm not being facetious. They are wonderful, they offer unconditional love, and in this uh, study showed by nextdoor.com, a not terribly scientific study, members in California versus the uh, US were, were asked about whether they uh, intend to adopt pets. This shows that it's a national phenomenon, that, that pet adoption, and we're going to have an adopted pet in the White House for the first time ever in January. All the other pets have been from breeders, by the way. And that's remarkable because saving lives of animals is a powerful tool for doing good, which is, of course, what we all want to do. And as well-being is the goal of medicine, that creates more well-being. As you care for animals, they, in, in a way, care for you as well. And then finally, who wouldn't want to adopt this or this? Unconditional love. Save a dog, save a life, adopt, don't shop. Next, and finally, um, we got to binge watch four seasons of The Good Place during the pandemic this year in 2020. Uh, that is an improvement. Over last year, we only got to binge watch three seasons of The Good Place. They are available on Netflix. I recommend you do so if you haven't, and I'll show you a couple of clips to show why. Um, as you know, The Good Place is a sitcom originally aired on NBC, now on Netflix, that uh, puts front and center ethical principles. It is a way to make ethics fun, funny, and at the same time, ask the important questions that ethics does. Uh, it's more successful than any other television show I know, or actually any other feature film I know, in communicating a lot of the things that we care about, the hard questions of what's right and what's wrong, and of helping people see those questions as, in fact, ethics questions, not financial ones or social ones, but in fact, ones of right and wrong. Now here, um, we get to see ethical principles on television, and with it, we get to see their, the humanity of the people who, who voice them. Um, here's a blooper to start. Let's see if we can do this. Utilitarian, not utilitarian. Utilit, I know, Morgan, I read all the same books Mike read for <laughs> research for the part. I have read none. Uh, yes, she did. And uh, Kristen Bell can make anything wonderful. And Mike, of course, is the creator of The, Great, uh, the Good Place. He also uh, created Parks and Rec. Um, he's a really talented guy, Mike Schur. Um, here is another way that Good Place instructs us about our humanity and the questions that we deal with with patients all the time, but in a different way. Where do we go next? I won't exactly know what's going to happen after I die. Nothing more human than that. Besides texting people that you're five minutes away when you haven't even left the house. Nothing more human than that. Nothing better as an actor than Ted Danson in a sitcom. Nothing more important than putting front and center what it means to be human, especially during this time of COVID. And then finally, uh, here is a, a little clip that shows what a good teacher can do. Lessons of ethics. It's only when the act of studying is combined with the process of relating to others that we become better. You've been our teacher this whole time, and we are much better because of you. And that is really true. Um, Mark Siegler, we are much better because of you. And thank you so much for your attention.